So now we know a sequence is and how to define it, and actually a couple special ones, the arithmetic and the geometric sequence. We want to talk about the limit of a sequence. So if the terms of a sequence approach a unique number L as n increases, that is, if a sub n can be made arbitrarily close to L by taking n sufficiently large, in other words, you're getting closer and closer and closer to a particular number, then we say that the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n equals L exists and the sequence converges to L. All right, so if the limit is equal to a particular number, some finite number, and it exists, then the sequence converges. Now, if the sequence does not go to any particular number, then we say the sequence diverges. Now it can go to no number in particular, or it could go to no limit at all. So diverging can happen a couple ways. It can happen if there's no limit at all, or it can happen if it goes to infinity. So this could be no limit, right? Just no limit. We'll see what that means. It could be positive infinity, or it could be negative infinity. Right? Because infinity is not really a place. So if you go to infinity, that's not really a limit. Right? So when they say no limit, they mean a couple different things. They're all no limit, but we think of them slightly differently. All right. So let's look at some examples, shall we? All right. So I want to look at this one. When n is equal to, and they want us to come up with the first four terms. All right. So doing this in our head a little bit, if I put 1 in here, if n is equal to 1, then a sub n is equal to, okay, 1 would be 3 over 2. If n is equal to 2, let me do it this way. Here, 2. There we go. 3 times 4 is 12. 12 over four, 2 squared is 4. 4 plus 1 is 5. If n is equal to 3, 3 times 9 Right, is 27. 3 squared is 9. 9 plus 1 is 10. And 4 would get us, here I'm just going to kind of separate these. 4 would get us 3 times 4 squared. That's 3 times 16, which is 48 over 4 squared is 16. 16 plus 1, so 17. Now, so far it's a little hard to see, right, because that's all fraction stuff. So why don't we look at it in decimals? In decimos, at that. Let me grab some decimos right here. All right, now you can see I tucked example three kind of into its own folder, and I'm going to do the same here. I'm going to do example 7a. So that way we can kind of turn it on and turn it on as we desire. I'm going to put in a table. I'm going to define this as n3, sure, right? Because it has to do that because it's the third one in the sequence. I actually could do n1 if I wanted to, because I have n1 already defined. And then I could say, hey, I want 3 times 3 times n1 squared over n1 squared plus, plus 1. Let's see if it likes me. Yeah, I didn't think it would. Yeah, it can't be defined elsewhere. Darn it. All right, well, I'll make it 3 then because this is the third one on my particular thing. So 3 and then 3 right here. And so then I'm going to tell it, hey, I want you to do this for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And you can see how this is going, right? So we are obviously heading somewhere. And if you get bored, you can always just type in, a thousand. See what happens. Hey, we're heading to three. <laughs> it's pretty obvious. And you can see it when you look at the decimals. So if I write those decimals down real quick, which I'm going to, and then if I go to my table, I can put dot, 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 and I can say a thousand here. And I can say I went to 2.99997. So my conjecture since it asked me to make a conjecture. So it asked me to find the first four values, which I did, right? They're right here, one, two, three, four, either in fraction or in decimal form, either way. And then it wants me to make a conjecture about the limit. I think that the limit, this is my conjecture, as n goes to infinity of three n squared over n squared plus one, 
that sequence is three. Which should not really be any shock to you because look at the powers. They have the same power, so what's the ratio of their leading coefficients? Three, right? It's the same trick that we learned a long time ago with L'Hopital's rule and other things. All right, now what about the next one? All right, so for this middle one, when n is equal to one, two, three, four, let's see what's happening. A, oh, b sub n, this is b sub n, three plus negative one to the one, negative one to the one is negative one. So that would be two, three plus negative one squared, negative one squared is positive one, three plus one is four, three plus negative one, because negative one to the three is negative one, is two, four. And it's just gonna keep going forever. That is called no limit. <laughs> that is going nowhere. <laughs> that does not exist, right? It's not going to infinity. See what I mean? Right. But it does not exist. So this, my conjecture, I don't even have to conjecture this. This is obvious. Is that the limit as n goes to infinity of b sub n, right? That ratio, I'm just going to call it b sub n. I don't have to rewrite it. It's right there. Does not exist. This is a divergent sequence. Mm. Here, b sub n is a divergent sequence. It's not going to infinity, but that doesn't matter. <laughs> it just doesn't exist. So have no limit. All right, next, let's look at c sub n. Whereas c sub n, oh, it's a recurrence relation. That's going to be fun. c sub 1 is my starter. So I can see n equals 1 is where I'm beginning. Right? So 1, c sub 1 is equal, oh, I'll make this c sub n. c sub 1 is equal to 1. 2, it would be the last number, which was 1, times negative 2. So that's negative 2. 3 would be negative 2 times negative 2, which is 4. 4 would be 4 times negative 2, which is negative 8. Both of these have a kind of a special property to them. They're called oscillating sequences. So I'll make a note of that down below. But let me make my conjecture. Which is that there's no limit to this one either. It is also divergent, just like letter B was. We're going to make a really quick note down here. Letter B and letter C are both called oscillating sequences. Can you see why? Um, they're oscillating because they're bouncing. This one's bouncing between 2 and 4, 2 and 4, 2 and 4, 2 and 4, 2 and 4. And this one is positive, then negative, and then larger, and then negative, and then right, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, and it's actually growing and expanding. So these are both oscillating sequences. Oscillating means going back and forth. Just for fun, I went and Googled the word so you can see it. So I gentle swing back and forth at a regular speed. That's implying for a fan, um, but it's a repetitive variation, typically in time of some measure from a central value. So you're going bouncing back and forth and back and forth and back and forth, right? Oscillating. And that is what's happening with both of these sequences. So we're just gonna make a little note of that. For another note, Let's think about this one just really quickly, because this was defined as a recurrence relation. How would we define that one as an explicit formula? That's a challenge of ourselves, even though it wasn't specifically asked for. How would I define this? How would I go from one to one, two to negative two, three to four, four to negative eight? Wow, right? So how do I make this work? Well, I can see that I'm multiplying by negative two every time, right? So that 
sequence C sub n is equal to negative 2 raised to a power, right? Because when you're multiplying by something, you're raising it to a power. So negative 2 to the 1, well, that's not going to work, right? Negative 2 to the 2 would make it positive 4, but that's what this one is. Negative 2 to the 3 would be negative 8, which is that one. So I need to take my n and subtract 1. That'll work. Because 1 take away 1 is 0. That'll be positive. 2 take away 1 is 1. 3 take away 1 is 2 which is 4, negative 2 squared is 4. Um, 4 take away 1 is 3, so negative 2 to the 3 is negative 8. So this is an um, explicit formula, and, oops, I should have written explicit. There we go, there's an explicit formula. And it was a geometric sequence. This is an oscillating geometric, right, because we're multiplying. 